Okay, let me ask you a very interesting question. Um, all right, if we're going to build like the matrix of the 21st century so that it's going to avoid the errors of, you know, let, let's not get into the whole question of there's going to be some people who argue, well, we've been screwed up as a planetary culture for like the last 10,000 years and how how are we going to sort through all of that data and decide, you know, who was right or who was wrong about what? No, 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 no. See, first of all, you don't do an analysis of somebody's intellectual property work until after they're dead. That's one of the fun... That's one of the finite definition, you know, variables for like, you know, all old knowledge and old wisdom. Okay, a as a principle, you just basically you don't judge someone until after they are dead. Okay, you know, perfect eternal stasis. You, yeah. Mhm. Mm See, and that's not just part of the that's not just part of the Christian paradigm. That doesn't require you to make certain, you know, given assumptions about, like, the nature of eternity, what, you know, whether reincarnation is true. See, that's always been a wild one to me, is, you know, if, if the universe, if, if time is a wheel, then it feels hopeless to me. That's, you know, the old Blood, Sweat, and Tears song, Spinning Wheel, okay? Somehow, crying about your truck, see... I, I believe the premise that crying about your troubles can be a crying sin, okay? But I don't necessarily believe that whatever we cycle through in the universe, we go through it over and over and over and over again, okay? It's it's not so much that I, don't, I like it. I only believe in in one finite life and then an eternity spent in heaven or hell. Okay, that see that's the problem, is that you know I've got to give the Roman Catholics credit for one thing. Okay, I believe I I can't necessarily say that Master Jack believed this, but I believe that the intent of Roman Catholic the theologians was to. Tr to try and deal with this whole doctrine of purgatory as a as a fact of you know an, an effect of observing that that morally okay most people are not at the extremes on any given issue most people are stuck in the middle okay so you know at least they postulated something that was like between heaven and hell Okay, at least they postulated a way for, you know, for like the average priest to not have to tell, you know, a grieving widow who just lost her son to some drunk driver somewhere, you know, or, or you know, let, let, it, let it be a plague anyway. We want to keep it in the Middle Ages, just a, you know, temporally consistent metaphor. I hate temporal mechanics. Okay, first of all, I hate temporal mechanics in the first place. Anyway, I got a question in the way of a thought experiment for Mr. Mark Zuckerberg and his crowd over Facebook. Yeah, the the billion dollar wussy, okay, the guy that, that really ticked me off. Why? Because he went after my mentors. Okay. He he appeared to go after my mentors at a at a uh, you know, at a mass effect level. And then they had to, you know, they, they have this whole separate domain structure set up. I'm not, I'm not going to go into the specifics of that because I don't want anybody doing any hacks into what they had to do to get around that. But anyway, it turned out when they, when they addressed the problem on a, on a Mass Effect level, it's a pretty simple fix to do. So there's this one particular domain called Empower Network that has been like technically blocked from Facebook. Well, the good news is, okay, th there's a reason they did that. They they did that to protect Facebook from like all the newbies who are doing bad magic without realizing it. 
okay? <laughs> and, yeah, don't, don't even get into, you know, when, when I say bad magic, yeah, I mean, ma I, I mean bad coding, I mean bad mathematics, but it's ultimately bad magic. Okay. Uh, anyway, these folks were doing bad magic because they didn't know any better. And, and like face, Facebook was getting thousands and thousands and thousands of these reports from like all over the world. Okay, well there's a reason why Facebook does not have a, uh, a dislike button. Okay, you know, you look at Facebook's architecture today and they only have a like button. I'm going to propose, first of all, that we start using a tripartite logic as the basis for, uh, you know, basically political functioning in the marketplace of the 21st century. You know, apply it to any question anywhere and, you, and basically you, you grab a primary opinion from any given individual. Your math dynamics become a lot, lot easier because then you get to know. Who are the people you really want to persuade? It's the folks in the middle. And most of us, ladies and gentlemen, are, are trapped in the middle of something that we are undereducated. You know, we are undereducated enough that it, that it feels, you know, it feels at the level of the effect on the subconscious as if the world is about to be destroyed by something. That, that's the substance of what I've been calling the apocalypse fever. Not only everybody wants to rule the world, but first of all, let's suppose there are many worlds. See, then you get into the complexity problem immediately, you know, and, and you don't even know what discipline you're trying to function in. Okay, but th but the thing about a personal paradigm is we can we can start very very uh, very very easy with a select group of adults who who want to do this particular study. What I'm saying is, you know, any question you want to take a survey on, okay, you want to have at least three data points in your in your spectrum curve. At, at all times, you know, if there's five, if there's five points, if there's ten points, whatever, you you can stretch a spectrum curve if you really want to get into that fine of gradation. But let's assume that like every question has at least three, diff uh, three different answers. I agree with it as a proposition. I disagree with it as a proposition, or I am somewhere in the middle. Okay, that, that helps to explain a lot of the, you know, the variables that I use in my own personal ethical paradigm. Uh, yeah, and, and most people are, are literally, it's part of the human condition that we are caught in the middle between heaven and hell all the time. Okay, if you apply that to like every possible discipline in your life, you'll, you'll begin to see some amazing results. I don't care who you're working for, you know, what, what their ethical bias is. No, 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 no. The primary premise of the project is I will teach you once and for all how to think for yourself, how to at least begin to think for yourself. And if you need to put more points on your data curve, then, then well, it's more complex than just, you know, one, two, three. That, that's perfectly all right. If that is a bounded variable in your particular study, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, like the limits of discipline, limits of knowledge, you know, limits of conceptual set before we even get into, like, let's build the hologram. Okay. But that should duplicate the, the problems that we have with the whole question of, you know, of, of 
mind being real when when you know when matter when effectively universe is not <laughs> okay and yeah people are people are awfully been people are awfully scared about that I've been promising myself for quite some time that I would address the question you know pretty soon here of like whatever happened to sin well the thing is not even not even sin under this system not not even sin has a strictly binary value okay so yeah and I know I'm gonna I'm gonna get weird on some of you but the thing is okay the dirty little secret you got to know about me as a person is that uh, you know basically I can't even analyze the, re the reactions I'm getting from most of the net because I can't define for myself psychologically you know when have I reached a bot versus when have I reached a real person I was just recently annoyed by you know this telemarketing script where they they wanted to their selling proposition was they wanted to help me work on my credit score or what have you okay or, or sell me a credit card or some such bloody thing as that anyway I used to work in a telephone boiler room it's one one of the only jobs that I ever had and yeah I, I absolutely hated it at the time Anyway, I learned some things about like the legality of how to do these kinds of telephone calls and I believe that under United States territorial law at least uh, there's a new standard in in like ethical cyberspace function which is if you're going to you know it's not just a question of putting someone else on your call list and forcing a mind okay but for example if you have a script that asks them to press one okay to to express volition of like I want to talk to a, a real life person at this point the problem best beloved is you need at minimum a second button pushing that says you know please take me off the list for at least 90 days or whatever it you know there are whole services dedicated to there are whole services dedicated to the proposition that you know I hate telemarketers and therefore you know any of these telemarketing robots is, is like not going to get the capacity to call me at all you know sorry sorry that that you know that that univalued solution crap is what I'm trying to get people away from because rational thought does not move that way okay neither does any philosophy that says you know you can just take 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 like take from the planet earth hello Greenpeace okay hello Shackley Corporation I've got your agent working for me only he don't know it yet and yeah I'm gonna be disciplining him later okay I'm going to be disciplining him later in terms of the game you don't need to worry about my end game all right but like Brian I'm sneaking up on the fact that because you did not take the opportunity I offered you when I offered it to you see most people best beloved see here's you know a whole implication for a school of evangelism that I would really like to see implemented throughout like all of Christendom okay it's fine for you to have your your petty arguments that that are part of your tradition or your school of thought you know whatever it happened to me you know we've already demonstrated that this whole you know Catholic versus Protestant versus Lutheran versus Methodist or whatever it is you know at a certain level of success yeah it has to be success in the real world see that's the paradox again if you want success in the re in the in the earth the first thing people are going to tell you is 
that guy over there because he's teaching X, Y, Z is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm dead sure that he's sinning. Can't identify the sin exactly, but I know that he's sinning. I know this emotionally. I know this in my spirit. See? And any time I put on that funny little voice, you know, any time I put on that funny little voice, I'm developing it as a speaking technique to show you that, like, you know, these are my standard methods of, re of rhetorical attack for any given proposition. Okay. And, and the first, you know, the first proposition I want to attack is judge not okay judge not balances with judge yourselves and what it comes to is judge always judge yourselves from the inside first you want to look up what Jesus said I'm not going to quote chapter and verse okay not a theologian okay that too is part of my speaking style but you know I'm terrible at like the mathematical addresses for Bible verses. That's, that's one of the things. You know, conventional memorization is, you know, you, you've you got to stuff into your head the exact address of such and such a yeah, legalism. Sheer, unadulterated legalism. Okay, and I'm proving it. Because if you go back and investigate anything I say, I'll guarantee you and I know this for a fact because, like, I'm not actually getting any reactions to the contrary. I have this thing called a Cassandra complex. And what that is, is Cassandra was this old Greek prophetess who was cursed by the Greek gods with a situation in which as a prophetess she would always tell the truth but the catch to that was she would never be believed okay and I'm discovering that that is you know that's not just a paradigm for an experiment that's beloved it may actually be a paradigm for my life it may actually be part of what I was put here on this earth to do Okay, and, and the thing I've discovered is if I can do it for myself, then I ought to be able to do it for, like, the next guy down the line. Okay, if I can do it for the next guy down the line, then, well, maybe I can do it for, like, a room of half a dozen people. If I can do it for half a dozen people, it follows I can do it for 12 disciples. I've, you know, give me 12 disciples, I can turn the world upside down. Okay, it, see, that's where it gets exciting, but this is a school of evangelism that most people don't even realize, is that God, if there is a God, will, by definition, never force a mind. Okay, the real God will never force a mind. In other words, he always is a gentleman about it, says Joyce Meyer. He always honors the first boundary, always assuming there is a boundary, if there is a boundary between, you know, what is the nature of good and what is the nature of evil, then there has to be a boundary of ethical consent somewhere. I paid for a package deal between me and my Lord Jesus Christ to say, well, if we actually took, like, every piece of knowledge that I could possibly apply from like any discipline that I had ever learned anywhere that meant half a damn. See, and this is where I learned my stuff, best beloved. It's not that I'm slamming you if you think that, you know, reading science fiction is wrong. No, I'm, I'm not saying that. You can take that as an ethical position. The fact that you look stupid to me ain't going to mean a damn. <laughs> okay? The fact that you look stupid to me, and you, you probably don't trust me worth half a damn, that ain't going to mean half a damn to me because I've got my own war to fight. Okay? 
and I externalized that ethical paradigm when I went into the Salvation Army. Okay? The results I got from the Salvation Army, and I'm not quick I'm not kicking the Salvation Army as as a tradition. Okay, there there's a certain specific individual that basically I need to make some form of repentance to at some particular point, or he needs to make a repentance to me. You know, what you know, whether we want to or not, that's basically that's going to happen on some terms, or his career will be over at a minimum. Okay, without mentioning any names, probably made the mistake of mentioning his name before. Okay, it's not like it's a secret to like the whole world. No, uh uh, no, 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 no. See, if Satan believes in anything, best beloved, he wants to keep the truth a, you know, a deep, dark secret that that. You may actually invoke demonic powers if you get involved with such and such a discipline. Okay, it was like, yeah, well, for most of mankind's history, we really didn't know the difference between angels and demons. That's what I'm going to say. Okay, not a theological argument. That's simply a mathematical argument, folks. It's a sociological reality that for most of human civilization, period, we did not know the functional difference between angels and demons. Okay? So if there is a ghost in the machine, I'm going to find the ghost in the machine. Okay? If there's a way to define the problem of evil, I'm going to do my very best to define the problem of evil. Okay? Catch is, at a certain point, you have to believe that you're on the side of the Jedi, for example. Okay. Um, so, anyway, va valences, light and dark, um, ethical spectra. Where where was I going with this? Oh yeah, you need you need at least three different kinds of, of so-called like buttons. At Facebook, you need. You need, I agree with this, I disagree with this, or frankly, I'm somewhere in the middle. Okay. One of the things I'm really interested in testing for is like when do ethical systems as such like come into conflict with each other? You know, and and basically, is it the is it the psychological biases of the people involved that are doing that? See, I, I know that probably the Empower Network Wizards already have an application level access to, like, everything I'm having to learn on the street. Okay, and, and this is what comes of everybody in the system defining the money as the small green pieces of paper. It's not the small green pieces of paper that are unhappy. Okay, it's not the small green pieces of paper that are evil. Okay, it's not even the love of the small green pieces of paper showing up at your doorstep that is evil. Okay, it's basically, you know, it's violating a mind to get what you decide you want because you're, you know, because you're you're with the Sith. You're with the forces of darkness, whoever, whatever they are, okay, and, and basically let, let's just define them as, you know, lords of order, lords of chaos, okay, proof Babylon 5, hello, okay, I mean, it's time that I, I revealed my personal philosophy of warfare with apologies to J. Michael Straczynski, who does not like his material to be merchandised on. Okay, in other words, if he made a point inside uh, Babylon 5 that he did not want, you know, the toy companies getting a hold of his stuff and trying to spin his stuff away from him. Well, the good news is, folks, that, that his stuff is in the can 
and there's a couple of very specific clips that I need to put in my course as like part of his intellectual tradition. So I think we're actually going to be able to negotiate this. Okay, because he made an awful lot of points about good and evil in Babylon 5. Go, go watch Babylon 5 sometime, you know, and you'll understand just how much blood, sweat, and tears he put into it. The man's a genius, okay? Maybe not a prophet, but a genius. And the thing I really admired about his work throughout Babylon 5, Okay, when you when you study it out, he's one of the few science fiction writers that I knew at the time who like did not duck the whole question of multi-valued religious systems. Okay, Mo most people follow like you know say the 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 Isaac Asimov school of Darwinism. Let's call it that. You know, first of all, theism, atheism, and and, and Darwinian natural selection are actually two separate spectra, two separate issues. That's where I tend to disagree with Richard Dawkins. Okay. But, anyway, um, yeah, Babylon 5 is, wor is worth looking into. And what I admired about that as a system, now that it's in the can, is that when he wrote that whole vast five-year story arc about life in the uh, 22nd, 23rd century, he pointedly did not duck this whole question of, like, you know, man has outgrown religion as a concept. No, no, he knew much better than that. Okay, he had... Um, I think there was like this whole order of Catholic priests on the station. He he had Susan Ivanova uh, greeted and and basically ordered to sit Shiva as a as a practicing Jew for the death of her father. Okay, which is another place where I disagree with Dawkins at you know a functional level. Why why I fear Richard Dawkins? I still fear Richard Dawkins. Chances are, if I get, ever get the chance to, to actually come into the same room with him, we're going to have points of agreement or disagreement, okay? That, that's going to be like the point of the exercise, and people are literally going to be there eating peanuts and selling tickets, <laughs> okay? You know, but here's the thing. Okay, maybe the service I can do for Richard Dawkins by way of doing a service for this planet, ladies and gentlemen, maybe where we can come into agreement finally is the man should not have to spend the rest of his career defending what, what he does or does not believe to be silly positions. Okay, he's got books to write in a finite amount of time Okay, in a situation in which he dies dead, goes poop, and there's nothing. Okay, the fact that I consider that a tragedy does not prevent him from being a sensible person. Okay, <laughs> so anyway, levels and levels of argument. Um, you know, let, let's try for at least a three pointed model in the ethical consideration of anything. Okay, go for it, folks.